Welcome to Unstoppable Podcast with Harry Sardinas, inspiring conversations with influential millionaires, investors, thought leaders, entrepreneurs who are making a massive difference with their innovative products and services and sharing the challenges and wisdom of how they sold their first million. How would you like to achieve your first million in sales? And today we have a surprise, Edith Norman, a serial entrepreneur and very charismatic. Uh, he's based in US. Kadim, can you please introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. My name is Kadim. I am based in the US. I'm currently traveling in South America. Right now, I'm actually in Uruguay. So I'm excited to be joining Harry for this podcast episode. I'm looking forward to you know having this conversation. So, wow, you're joining us for Uruguay. That's fantastic. So what happened then? If you're in Uruguay, who's running your business? Well, that's that's one of the first secrets that we'll come back to later. But, you know, you have to have a team of people that you trust. And, you know, you have to be a leader. Leadership is one of the, you know, first principles of running a business, being able to inspire and encourage other people and being able to teach skills to other people. Those are some of the really impactful skills that, you know, you learn and develop, but then you also study. On your journey to entrepreneurship so um yeah someone else um different teams of people are running things very very smoothly so why do you decide to become an entrepreneur your parents are an entrepreneur you have a friend that is entrepreneur how you decide to start in mean, real estate that's a great question so uh well that's two questions so and real estate and entrepreneurship is different so i'll, I'll actually give you the entrepreneurship one first because that's very interesting um so I've actually never told this story, so this is an excuse. Okay, woo! First time, first time that we're gonna know the story. Excellent, go for it. Okay, so uh, my first entrepreneurship endeavor was I was sitting one Christmas, and my father. You no, know, by this point, my mom had passed. She had passed cancer, so it was just me and my dad. And he asked me, "What did I want for Christmas?" And I sat down, and this is like as a teenager kid right and I sat down and I said you know what I really want to do I, I don't want anything I want to give away to people I want to give away just a ton of gift bags to people and so that Christmas what we decided to do was a local church we partnered with them and we put together 100 gift bags and we walked in the streets and gave it to people but that was my first time ever raising capital right wow. ever making sales fundraising right um organizing um that was a team of maybe like 15 people and i was a you know kid and then we got it together and then we had to organize dates and then we had to organize police escorts i was doing that as a kid but that was my first time being really thrown into the world of entrepreneurship and you know it wasn't for profit but it's entrepreneurship nonetheless and that was really cool oh yeah yeah proper entrepreneur yeah at the end of the day is <laughs> you know uh, the whole sack is about giving back so where do you think that they, these, um, where did thought came from? Did you saw something in the TV, you got inspired by your dad, your dad is someone that, uh, or maybe by your mom, what happened with your mom, sorry to hear that, that you decided that to shift that, that, that you suggest. So why did you do, at so early age, you know, don't get me wrong, but right. I'm a, when I'm 18, I'm only, what I was thinking is drinking and chasing girls, yeah. So, the, so, so, <laughs> so early age, you decided that, that you want to contribute to people. Is maybe what happened with, with your mom or, or you got inspired by your dad or what happened there? You know, um, I think, I think, I, I think every entrepreneur has a sense that they can do something to make the world better. Mm -hmm. I think every entrepreneurship has that in their spirit. And, you know, to varying degrees, that's what we do. We see ideas in our mind and we're like you know i could do that <laughs> i could bring that into reality and so that was my first time doing that uh beyond that why did i continue beyond the first one was well i decided that you know coming from humble beginnings i didn't want to have to worry about money like people i saw in their 60s 70s 80s right i'm sure you have friends um you know and i certainly know people as well even family you know trying to talk to <laughs> uh, that they're approaching retirement and they're realizing that it, it's not so good right now for retirement. You know, at 401k, you know, if you have a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000, if you're going to retire at 65, that's not enough because people are living until they're 90. No, right. They're, you know, that's 
That's not enough to last 30 years. And so I realized that at 50 years old, right? And at 15 years old, I decided, you know what? I'm going to try to find a path to retire before 30. That's what I'm going to do. That's all I'm going to spend my time on. And so then at that age, I knew that a job would not do that. It had to be entrepreneurship. No, I didn't know about real estate. I didn't know about investing. I didn't know about long-term anything. No, I just and knew. And you knew that you want that, to retire at 30. <laughs> and it wouldn't be a job. That, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and when you change your thing. mindset, when 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 you put in um, uh, your mind in that space, right? And you take the decision, okay, I'm going to do this. I want to retire at 30. All of a sudden, uh, you are more open to the possibilities that can get you there exactly. faster because now your mind is, exactly. if I tell you about the red card, you would tell me, oh, Harry, I haven't seen any red card in two weeks. And maybe you go out of the out of the office and now you right. see 10 red cards and, and one right. because now you have awareness, right? So by exactly. creating that decision that you want to retire um, by 30, you put that awareness into your brain. But also I yes. agree with you, you know, Every entrepreneur somehow has something within that I can I can make a big difference to other people. I can I can do it. Right. I can do it. I can do this. Right. Um, you know, it's true that you can get inspired for from family, from friends, from from anybody, but it still right. has to be within you. If you don't have right. it in you. Some people that we talk about, they build businesses and, you know, they, 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 they fail. And I think it's because this entrepreneurial spirit is not that. They just right. fear that I want to do this, I want to do that. But, um, but that having that spirit with it is really, really important. I have exactly. seen all my life since uh, I was a right. very bad employee. <laughs> I, I work for... Uh, uh, for the Hilton when I arrived here in London, and the and it was uh, it was a it, it was a um, uh, I was an employee and and you know right. it was the, I I wanted to take my own decisions I want to take the thing so it was really exactly. uncomfortable for me to be an employee so I I said well exactly. Uh, and so parallel, I started my first real estate business, same like you. So how come real, real estate came to your path? What happened? So, you know, so real estate is a completely different story. Um, it wasn't altruistic at all. It was purely about profit <laughs> um, when I started, at least. Uh, so what happened was I could not afford rent, right? So then what happened was I decided, okay, I have this room and other people want this room. That was my thought process. This was my first year in college. I couldn't afford my rent. I moved to college. No money at all. Um, I had no job because, you know, broke college students, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I decided, okay, so How if I you? can, uh, I was college, 17, 18, 18 years old. Wow. Right. So uh, I decided, okay, so let's move out of my room and I'm going to sleep on the couch. Right. I have nothing to lose. I'll sleep on the couch and I'll rent my room to somebody else. So that's what I did. I heard about this thing called Airbnb. I said, okay, well, let me put it on Airbnb and see what happens. Turns out Airbnb not only made my rent in a few days, but doubled my rent. So then now I was earning money from my room. And I said, wait, wait a second. Oh. <laughs> this is amazing. Now you know that I'm about to sleep on the coach. Now you love this coach, yeah? <laughs> no, I, I love this coach. Man, you're making money you know, so out of this? Who cares about the so coach now, anymore? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, now, so now you I'm were looking to, forward to sleep there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, now, now I'm going through my classes in college and I'm thinking, oh, well, these, you know, broke college students. <laughs> ah, and then now you have money, you can pay the sandwiches yeah, to everybody yeah. and they don't know what you are No, I'm buying people Starbucks, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, yeah, right. So then, so then what happened was, uh, after a while, I started to talk to the landlord and I said, hey, you know, I'm making money from this one. Of course, I got the permission from the landlord and said, you know, no problem. I'll sleep on the couch, whatever. I had the one bedroom and I said, hey, give me a second bedroom. Let me see. <laughs> Let me see what I can do. And then eventually I got the whole house 
And then eventually I was doing such a good job with that entire house, which was a five bedroom house, um, that I got other houses from her and her friends. And then eventually I had a portfolio while I was still in college. So then by the time wow, I was a junior you were in college, college, you had the portfolio? My exactly. Goodness. So then well, by the time I was a junior in college, I was making six figures. And that was my first break <laughs> <laughs> into real estate. It was like, yeah, yeah, there's no turning back. <laughs> yeah. The um, oh, real estate is amazing. You know, I, right. som sometimes, right, we become entrepreneurs by accident. Yeah. Here I have a similar right. story here when I came to London. When I came to London. Uh, uh, I didn't went to real estate because I want to, because I have to, because the same right. thing. Right. They pay me the salary in the Hilton. I think it was around 1,000, 1,200 pounds. Right. And I'm paying everything. Okay, transport back then was about taxes. Hundreds, oh my goodness! And then 650 pounds in rent, 700 pounds in rent, and I'm like nothing. I'm like man, I, I was I was spending most of what I was making. I'm like exactly. I just arrived to London from Spain, and the first month. I'm seeing my my thing and I said this this doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. All no, my doesn't money, work. all my money is comes is go out of the rent. So I have to solve my rent problem. Or why I'm not going to <laughs> to yeah, so something similar, yeah. I sleep in the living room, right? And then uh, I was sleeping in the living room, renting the rooms and yes, yes. That, uh, here in UK nobody cares about the living room. <laughs> because That's when good. we were putting the students and the students what they really want is fast internet and a comfortable bedroom they don't exactly. less out of the living room because exactly uh, they don't they don't come out <laughs> they never there they always study on their party they never in the house in the first place right so right. Uh, uh, the so i have uh, the literally the biggest room of the house, and again, it was, I'm telling you this about 16 years ago, yeah, yeah? long time yeah. ago, right? Yeah, yeah. So then we are in business by accident, okay? We have a product, we have the, we are making some profit, and now let's right. go to business. And now right. the thing comes, so where do you learn? Because now it's not the same thing to rent one room to have a portfolio. When the portfolio comes, you need to have a company, you need to have an accountant, you need to learn about tax, you need to learn about of course. marketing. So where do you learn all this? So it's very interesting. So I will tell you that there are two, two ways to learn very, very effectively. One is just by devouring books. I read a book a week for oh, wow. as, as long as I can remember. So, you know, that's, you know, a, a couple hundred by now. And additional to that is uh, mentors, right? Mentors, <clears throat> having people that you can ask questions mm -hmm. like, you know, back recently um you know i i got a leg up from someone that's very dear to my heart um and they were able to give me a script that they use in their uh, in their business that runs automatically and they called maybe like a thousand leads every day and so when they gave me that script i was like oh that's perfect but that's a mentor and that's what mentors do because just imagine how long it would take me to test scripts find scripts that would maybe be like maybe 10 years of work Right, yeah. but they just say they did the 10 years, and because they're my mentor, I just got that. But there's no way, and there, there's no way that you would have gotten that. And <laughs> without copywriting the is very expensive. That's just one example. Also. Copywriting exactly. is very expensive also to do it right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So then I just got that handed to me because of that mentor. So then again, I've, I've had several stories like that because of mentors. So obviously, you can learn a lot from books and, and videos and stuff. You know, I would recommend books over YouTube because, you know, uh, books is traditionally how a lot of knowledge is transferred. Obviously, you have videos out there that are very good. Of course, this episode will be really good, but the videos that are usually very helpful are not 10-minute videos. They're usually, you know, three-hour-long videos, eight-hour-long videos, and I watch those. <laughs> wow. But um, I have no problem watching, especially now because, you know, I have, have more time. <laughs> <laughs> um but I will sit down and watch the entire thing because that's where the information is. It would be like sitting down and listening or watch or reading a book. So that that's the equivalent. But you know, anything below twenty minutes, that's not real information. Uh, so then, two things are books and um, and mentors, definitely. 
And the other thing, what is your path from entrepreneur to serial entrepreneur? Because from entrepreneur to serial entrepreneur, there is a slightly difference, right? Because yes. uh, um, I, I used to own several businesses. I still own, yeah, several businesses. And you then you start to find out that no, all the business are as good as real estate. Some of them, uh, I, I open a restaurant here in UK. I have this, I put a hardly Spanish tab, I lose 200,000. Oh, people. restaurants are hard. So, <laughs> The secret of the journey, sometimes if you don't focus, it becomes a roller coaster. You are like, what's going on here? Uh, yes. So, but eventually you will find the pattern, right? And you will find the business. Yeah. So now you share with me before they have an invention, which is re related with merchants. Yeah. So how you decide to, to open the channel for multiple streams of income, uh, having more than one business, knowing that maybe you are taking a, one more risk because if you have something that is working yeah why are you gonna go to do something else that if it doesn't work it may, might eat all the <laughs> all, all right. the uh, things that you have so what 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 was your thought process about uh, this second venture of course so um what is essentially happening is that obviously you start with one you know um, one bedroom back then, and you realize, okay, so then if I have multiple bedrooms, if I have multiple houses, it's more stable. But then you think, okay, if I have one way to get customers, then that's a problem. So then let me jump from Airbnb. Let me also figure out other ways to get clients, right? So you have Google, you have VRBO, you have Home Away when it was then, and you have Craigslist, and you start looking for different ways. But then you realize, okay, what if somehow the market which doesn't happen, but <laughs> what is the real estate difficult? Real estate, real estate always is around. You can always yeah. do things yeah. with real estate. <laughs> it's always there. But then, but then what if, you know, somehow the real estate crashes and, you know, every yeah. entrepreneur goes through this, I want to secure what I'm doing. So then, you know, one income stream is far too close to being zero. And so you start looking, okay, let me start studying other ways. I don't want to switch because I want to minimize risk and I don't want to, you know, fumble this basket trying to chase this one because that would be stupid. But let me see if I can take 10% of profit from here, perhaps save it up, not do it all at once, so that I can plan my you know, departure, put someone in charge over here so that I can say, okay, I'm going to build this one up as well until maybe they're equal or this is 50% of this one. So then if this fails, I still have the 50%. And then you keep doing that until it's like, oh, I kind of have a portfolio here going on. So then... And one of the things that we're looking to into next is actually going to be laundromats. And laundromats, I'm not sure if you know this, have a 90, I think it's 3% success rate. Wow. It's a no-brainer. Wow. <laughs> That's a no-brainer. And there, there are tons of laundromats in the U.S. for sale right now. I'll give anyone this who's watching from the U.S. Tons of laundromats for sale in the U.S. right now. The reason why they're for sale is because they're traditionally owned by baby boomers who are retiring. So they want to leave. They want to sell the business. It's been working for the last 10 years. Every, everything is fine. The machine works. The help staff runs by itself, but they're just tired of running the business because they've been doing it for so long. And so you find these businesses on bizbysell.com, on LootNet. They're right there, bizbysell.com, LootNet. Um, you can find them and you can fund these deals by SBA loans. SBA loans, um, they allow you to fund I think up to 90% of, um, of the purchase price once the appraisal comes in, which is typically, the purchase price is typically just one to two times revenue for laundromats, which is fantastic. Um, if you're getting up to three times revenue, that's a bit much. Uh, but once you get these laundromats, what you find is that the laundromats are working, they just don't have a lot of technology built in. So then if you have a laundromat that's working and it relies on local flyers and stuff and it has a subscription already, then if you integrate lawn, um, if you integrate technology into that laundromat, then you can find, okay, no, we have promotions. Now we have a newsletter. Now we have a brand. Now we have a subscription um, service that's coming in. Now we have, you know, so much things that you can, and you can do the same thing with car washes as well. But if you find these types of businesses all across the US, that's a really powerful business. And, you know, laundromats are bringing in thousands of dollars every month, you know, every year, you know, 90, 100, easy. And it's already, yeah, because, you know, they do have the client base. They do have the, they actually works, the machine works and everything. They have a uh, technician, more, right, of course. Uh, yeah, more, more secure path for the entrepreneur to start the journey because their business is exactly. running. Yeah. 
Exactly. You use, you use uh, like you said, you get a loan and and you start running it and and you know, it's, it's a very good way. At least you know how to st to start from scratch. And exactly. I, I agree with you hundred percent that you know the worst number. Is, I always said that the worst number in business is one. Yes. One yes. business, one stream of income, one. Oh, when somebody tell you number one, one employee, one good salespeople, one good yes. marketing strategy, one good. When you hear in business the number one, run away. <laughs> oh yes. Because oh yes. This is. This is um, this is why one client would we we are we we had to run away from the number one yeah yes because yes. like you said exactly. very close to zero very close to zero close. so oh, yeah. marketing strategies more than one uh, clients more than one uh, business more than one everything exactly uh, away from the number one right exactly but yeah you can is um no, with my personal experience, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit adventurous. Yeah, I like something and I go for it. Yeah, uh, I'm very passionate about. So <laughs> the uh, I have this idea, I don't know from where in my head that I want to have a restaurant. Yeah, since I'm a kid, mm -hmm. I want to have my restaurant. And guess what? I did have my restaurant. I run it for two years <laughs> and now I don't want to do restaurants anymore. OK, hold on. It's not that I don't want to do restaurants anymore. I still go there. I'm thinking. When I have time, when I really want it, I'm going to go back at this restaurant thing and I'm going to make it work. It's, it's something that I have deep in my heart. Oh, yeah. Because at the I end of the day, you know, you do learn, honestly, it's, it's all about your path, right? The best right. master in business and administration I ever had was in that restaurant. In that restaurant where I learned about business. Right, because when right. Failing, exactly. When it's not working, it's when you, when you learn lessons that, you know, you can... You have to dig in, right. After that, right? right? So... <laughs> I only, when I lose money, I learn very good. <laughs> you see, uh, it, it stick to your mind, you know, so you, you, you of course. create that experience. <laughs> yeah. But it's also about business models, right? Um, because for example, in terms of the operation, right? I have a friend, I have a friend that owns 300 supermarkets and have 4,000 employees. And for right. me to think about my friend, I just think about him, I might just get tired and depressed, you know? Right. He's a CEO of a big organization, 4,000 employees, 300 supermarket, throw there, and he's the CEO. So he had to be available for everybody, meeting for everybody. He had to take all the decisions on the phone or sometimes. And I'm thinking, what? This is the kind of life I really want to live? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you think, you know, um, uh, I've got friends in real estate, multi, multi millionaires, friend of mine. Uh, that run lot, hundreds of properties here in United Kingdom, and every time they're meeting them, they're with the phone. The man, we are eating. Oh, hello, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so you tend to think about more holistic way how you want to live your life. I like to travel. Right. So, um, and making that money is not as difficult as it seems, right? But when yes. you keep this balance in life, right? How we want to live. Or for example, look at you. Now you 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 are traveling in South America, and all your your business is running, and you know, right. um, somehow you have to. Uh, and I know that is difficult. Disattach yourself from the main business in a way that sometimes you need to let the people run it for you and trust them. And they, they can be better than you doing the stuff. Yes. And, um, yes. This attachment can give you freedom, right? It can give you yes. to, to enjoy your life. Yeah. I'm looking. Um, yes. We we do these speaking tours all over the world. Yeah. Singapore, the yes. world. We're speaking from thousands of people about growing the business, about to start the business, and things like that. And it's amazing yes. because we have a speaking gig in Singapore, right? Yes. And we don't go for a week. We go for the whole month. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> we, speak, we speak, but we spend the whole month there. Like if we're going, we stay. Peru the same thing. <laughs> Peru, we have been like two times, I think, over ten thousand people tour all over the country. Big, the best holiday ever, you know. Uh, <laughs> but we don't, we we don't go for uh, for the period. We stay the whole month there. Yes, to Mexico, we have done in Mexico several times as well, and. Um, so you can combine, you know, a little bit of work of what you like with a little bit of yes. now that you're traveling anyway, why not take the whole month of holiday? And then you make friends there, you make connections. And it's about to balance um, the life and, and to 
to also time for yourself, time for your family, exactly. time for your friends. That's also important as well. And maybe to right. do this kind of thing that we're doing now that we both have right. to okay, exactly. share our yeah. knowledge and to help other people, right? Because we exactly. need time also. I think that exactly. you have a very deep sense of contribution. That's why you're in this podcast, right? It comes in your <laughs> trip, right? That you want to help people, right? You don't you yes. don't want you don't want everything for you. You want to Yes, I love to already have your thing and you're happy to have a conversation with me to give them actually the tip that you had to give them about the business is very, very good tip. Amazing, yeah. And can and I'm somebody happy. else is helping is is listening and helping this, all the whole conversation will be amazing. So right. let's talk about the um, this um because i always think you know the path of the entrepreneur yeah at the beginning you want to make money and everything but for you to feel complete fulfillment we notice this in in the events that we do all over the world right when people tell me harry you changed my life why would you change your life yeah, yeah i was in this conference you say this and wow changed my life look i have a kid this is my business sometimes nice. i'm here on the street in the metro so sometimes i'm in the metro people say are you harry you are Harry. So I'm like, <laughs> yes, I yes. know you. I know you, Harry. I was in this. There's no feeling. Les Brown, do you remember? I was in the second floor, and you say this, and look, I change. And okay, we I sign whatever they want. We take a picture, whatever. But then oh, yeah. going home with the feeling of fulfillment that sometimes it's a little bit addictive, yeah. more than money. Oh, yeah. more, more that you actually make a difference in people's life. It give you, you know, uh, because honestly, the first time I make one million after two days, I was like, right. yeah. <laughs> so what? You know, yeah. I, thought, no, you know I, think, oh, I want to make <laughs> a million, I want to be a millionaire, I want to make a million that this is going to give me from feel I'm going to be dead. But then when it actually happened. Yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. You don't also care <laughs> as you thought yeah, that yeah. you're gonna care. You know, after you do it yeah. two, three days, you are like, you know, the, I thought that this is gonna keep me fulfilled, but actually it doesn't. So you do no, it's the people. Song. Yeah. So in, in your experience, how um, you are feeling your journey, right? When you are traveling around the world, which is something that you love. I love that too, also. Um, you can yes. actually, you are in control of your life. You are in control of your lifestyle. You do what you love and what you want. And also you have that time to help other people. Do you mm -hmm. find this sense of fulfillment also? Yes. Uh, so one of my favorite messages to get on my social medias is, hey, you helped me. Or thank you. Or I love the things that you post continue, wow. right? I mean, you know, what's interesting about social media, and I'm guilty of this too, is that social media is free to see, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we take it for granted that these people are sharing their information and we can even reach other people for free that it didn't really exist 20 years ago. And so, you know, you you learn these things, like for example, I'll, I'll give you um, a scenario. Uh, Credit in America, very important. So um, this is another helpful tip. Um, if you have good credit in America, you can get anything. <laughs> that's, 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 pretty, that's pretty cut and dry. If you have good credit in America, you can get everything, anything that you want. Um, my credit is um, almost an 800. Wow. And so perfect credit is an 850. Good credit, you know, like, you know, above average credit is a 720. So then once you're above a 720, you can get almost anything that you want. And when I was working on my credit, building my credit limits over $100,000, now it's over $200,000, just my credit limits alone. Then if I wanted to just, without going to the bank, if I didn't need to go to the bank, I didn't need to sign documents, just my credit cards, I could go and put down $200,000 on the table, right? So then to do that, I learned that from people on YouTube for free. <laughs> now that's imagine that, right? That, that, that's my entire point, that that's social media. And... I've never had the chance to thank those people. You see what I'm saying? Wow. Um, because I don't know them. I don't know them. So then if I'm doing the same thing, I can't imagine. And even as you're sitting here thinking for yourself, yeah. there's so many people that watch you that won't get the chance to thank you. But, you know, 
I, I will personally say thank you to what you're doing, right? Because we need we to hear to, it. We as thank creators. you also, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. We, 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 we are guilty of the same thing. There are books that we read that, wow, this is so good. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and, you know, we never got the chance to talk to the authors, the creators. So, um, yeah, it does matter. And so those messages, I, I really love them. And, and you know, um, yeah, makes a real big difference for me. Okay. And now the question that everybody's waiting, waiting for, what are the five steps to make your first million? All right, so here we go. So the first is to dive into learning. Um, we already covered the two different types of learning, which are books and mentors, but you have to dive into learning because everyone that operates at a high level is an expert at something. You cannot make money by not being an expert in something. Uh, that's just the way it works today. And, you know, I think when I talk to many people, many people, when they're growing up in high school, they're like, oh, I want to become a singer. You know, I want to become an athlete. Even those people are experts. But I will also tell you that the success rate, the people who become successful there, are it's like maybe 1% to 2%. In a real estate, 90% of people are successful. <laughs> right? <laughs> in vending machines, uh, sorry, in vending machines, um, laundromats, car washes, you know, it's like 95, 97%, 85%. So, you know, if you're going to go after a field that has only 3%, um, versus someone who is going after a field that has an 85% success rate, the people who are making a lot of money there, they're just really smart people, <laughs> right? They're really good at sales. They're really good at marketing. Um, they're really good at operations, something. They're really good at it, right? So you have to get good at something and be an expert in that thing. Second thing is that you need other people. No person that is on the Forbes list did it by themselves. No. And if you are studying money, you have to recognize the master, the, the power of a mastermind, right? This is in several books. You can call it the star group. You can call it the focus group, whatever you want to call it. But you have to have other people. There is no way that I could have a business running if I did not have a close team that you talk to, you know, that you run ideas by. It's not uncommon for me to get on the phone and say to someone on my team, I'm thinking about this. What do you think? And they'll trash every part of the idea except for this one thing. And that (laughs) one thing will make a lot of money. But that's the power of a mastermind, right? Because you have to have someone that you can bounce ideas off of. Uh, The second thing is that you, you need to get comfortable with, with failing and taking risks. Um, every entrepreneurship person is doing that. So once you've learned, once you've gathered the team, you have to feel comfortable with taking risks. With the team that we've gathered over the you know, last couple of years, we failed a lot. <laughs> we tried different things and it's normal, right? We'll waste $5,000 here, we'll waste $10,000 here. And just, you know, we tried everything and it doesn't work. But we learned. <laughs> You learn, and, and you failed. learn. Out of the try, you learn. <laughs> exactly. And we learned different skills and everybody got better as a result. And, you know, um, so then one, once you take the risk, you learn, you 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 find um, something to become an expert. You Sorry, you become an expert, you find the team and you take the risk. Um, then it becomes really, you know, okay, now we're moving forward and we're actually doing something because there are so many entrepreneurs who just read and don't act that doesn't make sense (laughs) you know and and they're just regurgitating the same information the fourth step i would say is to find a mentor this is different from the focus group but you need to find a mentor this is different from learning as well becoming an expert a mentor is someone who has done the exact same thing that you have done and here's what i say so um, if you are following one mentor right so every one of my businesses i've had one mentor and i'm learning their specific style Wow. And you have to master their specific style first before you add on all of the other things that you learned in step one. But you have to master this first, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because they did it a way that works, right? They have thousands of properties. They have thousands of locations. They have thousands of employees and they know what they're doing. So then just learn what they're doing, right? And then after that, you can say, hey, you know, maybe I could make it better. But if you do it before you master it, it's going to crash. Mm-hmm. So don't do that. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. And we've all been there. We think we know better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we might rest. You don't. Oh, right. What a disaster. Yeah, yeah. No. So I agree 100%. The plan. So then learn, yes, take the risk, etc. Um, And then when you get to the mentor, stick with the mentor. And just choose one. Because if you have two or three different mentors and you're going to take this from this and this, it's not going to work because that's not the same system, right? That's not the same way. So then if you just stick to one person who you know is successful and you prove they're successful and you have a good relationship with them, 
whether it's in person or over the phone or whatever, stick with that system and just perfect that system because it, it makes money because they approved and they have other students who it makes money for. And then the last thing is that remember that you have to, I, we talked about this as well, which is relinquish control. Um, but it's not necessarily that, it's recognizing that after you make the money is that you have to actually enjoy your life. Well, that's part of my philosophy. Um, I like the full philosophy. That's what I talk to people about. And it's a part of freedom. So the reason why entrepreneurs get into the game, for the most part, is for the freedom that it gets them. The freedom to travel, the freedom to spend time with their family members, the freedom to help, freedom to not answer to anyone. But then if you forget that, what happens to a lot of people is that they want so much control and they they gave up a yeah. nine to five and now they're working um, from seven until midnight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even that they have and millions in the bank account, right? <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. And I see so many of my friends do that. It's ridiculous. And they forget the freedom and they can retire. They just don't. And, you know, they, they lose relationships because they're working too hard. Yeah. They lose their, 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 their kids walking for the first time because they work too hard. And so well, it's after help. that, after you perfect that system and after it's working, recognize that you got into the game not for the money in the first place. Because while you are working, the thing that's missing is the rest. And I, I like to tell people, just to remind people, that money isn't even a top five priority. Not even top five. Right? Because exactly. if, you know, for example, I love this question. Um, maybe a few months now that someone said it for the first time on social media, but if someone gave you $20 million, but you couldn't wake up tomorrow, would you take it? No. If someone gave you $20 million and you would never experience love again for the rest of your life, would you take it? No. Right? And, and the list goes on. So then you realize, okay, well, even if it's $20 million, <laughs> it's not worth yeah. my friends. It's not worth love. It's, no, it's not worth, not love. It's not worth the priority, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not that important. <laughs> yeah. And then... Yeah, it's to see, you know, how to, uh, because we met, I've met a lot of people or, or you hear stories, right, that actually um, even some uh, Hollywood celebrities or whatever, that they actually kill themselves. And um, you're thinking, how come you have all the yeah. money in the world? You are so, exactly. Uh, I think that the reason is because they haven't worked on themselves, right? Yes. Uh, you have to do the work on yourself. I think that, you know, exactly. the entrepreneur path is not easy. It requires a lot of drive. And sometimes in that way, uh, you might, uh, because you work so hard, because uh, you need to do everything for yourself, because you didn't have a mentor, which was my case and everything, within, without having a mentor is really, really hard. You have to come on with everything, right. you have to fail and fail and fail and fail because you didn't have a, a mentor or anyone that actually guide you. Um, um, despite that, a friend told me a few things about real estate, I have to say, yeah, right. I have right. my little bit of mentorship, but it was not. So then you have this thing that you work so hard that you build this, and then uh, it comes that you become attached to it. You don't want right. to let it, you don't want to let it go. You don't want to employ more people. You want to do everything yourself, and and, right. and you go inside that mindset and actually affect your head because you're working 14, 16 hours every day. You sleep in very little. Yeah, you can't do that. And right. uh, and then you're tired, and then you're not functioning properly. And uh, and to move to that to to the other way, which is not work in the business, work on the business, right? It's completely different. It's like a chess game, right? Uh, right. Sometimes when people are playing the chess, the people from see from outside, they see more, right? Because right. they're outside the game. So, right. entrepreneurs, we have to manage to disattach ourselves so we can see the game from outside. And, right. And also look after our health because at the end of the day, we need to have a very good mental health because exactly. we are That's responsible what we earn. for everybody. We are responsible for the employees. We are responsible for the clients were responsible right. for everything. So we have exactly. to be aligned and healthy and, and with the right mindset. So what's the last message, right. Kadeem, that you have for everybody there that is listening, that maybe have 18 years old and, and have this, this feeling that you have within you when, when you start to your business? 
And um, and so what message do you have to inspire those those boys that, that want to see you as a role model? Maybe they want to have you as a mentor. How they can find you? How they can find you? Somebody's listening and say, oh, oh yes, of course. for me, I'm 19 years old. I'm going to do exactly like he did. How they can find you? So my name is Kadeem Leslie. You can find me on Google. Um, my favorite place to connect with people is on Instagram. I am Kade. I A M K A D E underscore I am Kade underscore. Um, but my my last piece of advice for anyone is this is my favorite piece of information, favorite um piece of advice, um inspiration. If you think about it, it actually goes very deep. Uh, you're going to die. <laughs> You're going to die. And I think that's inspiration, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree 100 percent And with that note, yeah, you're going to die. So make the most out of your life. Be happy. That's right. Happy. Uh help a lot of people, have fun, make a lot of money. We wish every listener uh that is listening to this podcast uh that this interview can be a source of inspiration for you, for your life. Thank you so much, Karim. So grateful that you have your precious time sharing with us and with our audience. We really, really appreciate it. And for you listening to the podcast, see you in our next episode, how brave entrepreneurs break the wall of, of resistance and break through and make the first million in sales. Bye for now. See you in our next chapter. Bye -bye. Follow us for more interviews with world's most influential, audacious entrepreneurs that overcame challenges and adversity, providing you with the blueprint of how they sold their first million so you can grow your business exponentially.